today's video is all about melting a lathe. Now why I'm using it is, there's two reasons. One, the bed weighs 33 kilograms, so it'll last quite a few melts, but also at each melt I'll know exactly what I'm getting. And the second reason is, I'm desperately short of small pieces of cast iron that will fit in the crucible. So the guinea pig for this trial for the lathe melting, I'm using the pattern for a surface plate and we'll see how that goes. So there we go, that's the results of the session with the angle grinder, a very efficient tool for cutting up scrap cast iron. This is the part that I'm interested in the most, checking a piece that's been cut and fractured and it's got a nice grey structure so it's really good for melting down again.
Okay, so I'm ready to lift off the cope, but you'll probably recognise this box. It was for my last video. But what I don't like about it, I've made it very, very tall. It is 90 millimetres from there to there. And when I use them with my pouring trolley, it's going to cause a few problems, but hopefully I can manage that. But the other problem is, I usually use shorter boxes, and you can see the sprue, it's shorter. But I'll show you how I get them out. Now because the box is so tall, I had to use a little step ladder to lift the box up. So this is how I get the sprue out. Just give it a bit of a tap from behind. And there it is, out it comes. Okay, so we're ready to take the pattern out, give the pattern a bash. It's a fairly deep pattern, so you do need to hit it reasonably hard without destroying the pattern or the mould. So, why have I got the riser in the centre of the casting? Well, I'll show you. <laughs> the junction or the joins, they're in the centre. The centre of the casting generally freezes last and I know that will shrink but what I've got to do because the rise is sitting on top there's a sharp edge you see that sharp edge there and if they go around like so and take that sharp edge off and put a slight radius on there so it'll stop the hot tearing and the hot spots and cause problems on the top of the castings which has to be machined. Last thing to do, got to put a little pouring basin in on here. Need a bit of a target area when I'm pouring with a full crucible. With the trolley it can be very difficult to aim. As I'm using my pouring trolley the crucible will be very full so it's impossible to get the lip really close to where I'm pouring. So what the idea is, I'll put a lot of parting powder on there and pack it in with your finger like that. And that hopefully stops a lot of the erosion when the first metal hits the sand and knocks off pieces. You don't want that happening. So the mould's ready to go and we'll point out a few things. Number one, I've put a bit of a heat shield. In the past the boxes burn too much. So hopefully that will correct that. This is for when you aim the crucible with a trolley. It's very hard to aim. But if you do splash a little bit, I've got a little guard there and there, so if it does splash it won't fall into the riser or into that riser. So we've got the clamps. I reckon clamps are the best way to go for moulds because when you screw these down you don't have to screw them down very much at all. And what happens is when the boxes start to lift they are trying to bend that backbone so they're not going to go very far. You don't have to put much pressure on these clamps. But if you put weights on and you underestimate the amount of weights, well, there it goes. You've got Mach 9 going everywhere. 
So hopefully that'll give you a bit of an insight now. Now the mould is ready to go. This is why wooden boxes don't last long, that is smoke, not steam. The residual heat from the casting heats up the sand 
and cooks the wood. With this melt I'm using a cast iron that I've never used before so I like to do a wedge test to see exactly what I'm getting. So here is the wedge test, looks grey all the way through so that means machining will be quite easy to do. The casting has been cleaned up, it's come out really well. But I'll show you something here. You see these junctions? They do tend to cause a shrinkage on the other side. So I used two different methods to try and fix that problem. One worked and one didn't. So we'll flip over the casting. Now what I'll use it as a method here is I push my finger into the cope and made a little bit of a bubble in here so that'll compensate for the shrinkage I did in four places here but what was a really bad idea I put a riser in the center now what happened I put radiuses all around the bottom to stop shrinkage and hot spots but it didn't happen it caused a massive amount of shrinkage as you can see, you go around here, around there, and around there. So next time round, what I'll do, the riser's got to go, and I'll do the same thing in the cope. I'll push with my finger all around that area, and I only have to raise it up just a little bit, and it should fix that problem for the next time. So we'll have a look at the wooden moulding box, and see what happened to it when molten cast iron is poured into the mould. Well, as you can see, it's pretty charred around here, here, and here. But the odd thing that I found strange was, it's perfectly flat here, but because the edge of the surface plate is only 23 millimetres away from there, see what's happened? It's really distorted the piece of wood there, and the same the other side. So as it's pulled outwards like that, your two dowel holes here, have pushed in a little bit so the box won't shut properly but I'll show you how easy it is to fix that problem here's a closer look at the nail and the dowel hole you look closely you'll see the nail has to go a little bit that way so all I do is tap it with a hammer and it will fix that problem so what I do you just go and give it a light tap with the hammer The trick is not to do it too much. There we go. Here's a quick look at the cope. It only got scorched a little bit here, here and here. The trick is I think with uh, wooden boxes is you've got to try and pull them off before they start to burn. But with the profile, the grooves in here, it makes it hard to do. What I'm pleased with, there's a shield you can see the paint there, it's been burnt, it's protected the box on that side where the sprue was, so it worked out well.